Okay, folks, Gary Gregg reporting from Santa Ana, California. And as many of you may know, and if you don't, you should, we have a big, 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 big palm problem on our hands here these days. Uh, it's called the South American Palm Weevil. And it now is in San Diego County working its way north. Total bummer. It's going after canary palms. Pretty much exclusively canary palms. There's been a few cases of a few other things, but almost entirely canary palms. They're literally dying left and right down in San Diego. You can spray these trees, but you gotta spray them three or four times a year. I sprayed mine twice a year and it caught it. I was just about to spray it again after six months. I got down to San Diego to my place and I looked up at the tree and I'm like, no, no, it has it. I'll show you back at the nursery. Um, but anyway, I thought, all right, well, you know, canary palms are like big and thorny hard to take care of. You got to pay a lot of money to trim them. If you don't trim them, they're a fire hazard. There's a lot of downsides to the canary palm, but there's not a lot of things that are that massive and big that are as cool. So what are you supposed to do? Because you don't want to plant another canary palm. And you're going to have to spray, 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 spray constantly a couple hundred bucks each time. That gets costly. So I think it's time that we got to switch over to something way more cool than that. Now we all know about the queen palm. Right there. That's a really good option, you know? It's a really uh, easy to take care of palm. No florins on it. Looks good if you trim it. Uh, even if you don't, it's semi self cleaning, so it'll look pretty good uh, left to its own devices. And of course, we all know about the quintessential LA palm. That's the Mexican fan palm right there. Skinny trunks, little heads. But of course, you know, that tiny little head is not going to compare at all with the mass of a canary palm. And the queen palm is just a little common. What to do? <laughs> da, 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 da. Dun, 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 Hope that doesn't get copyright blocked. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's the perfect music. I just can't afford to pay for the rights. So I have to sing it myself. I'm sorry. Okay, what are we looking at? We're looking at a beautiful palm with a giant fat white trunk. Look at the white. Let's go look at the white together. Look at the white. This is so beautiful, guys. This is the most beautiful tree you can grow in Southern California. Northern California, it's gonna be a struggle. It's a little more tender. It's not as hardy as a canary palm. But look at this. I don't know, like, what happened? Is it, oh yeah, it creates this, I never knew that. Like, film that comes right off. Look, probably use that as paint. You want white gray paint? Anyway, here we go. This isn't just any old palm. This is a royal palm. And it's not just any old royal palm. This is the, the common royal palm is the Cuban royal palm. All right. The Cuban royal palm has kind of a frond that's a lot like a regular queen palm, meaning it radiates out in all directions, plumose like. Then there's palms like the king palm that all come out flat. Well, this one looks really especially pretty because it comes out flat, but on a double layer. So it has a much more neat appearance to the frond than your typical royal palm. We'll go back to my nursery and I'll show you the difference on some trees that I have there. But I think I'm willing to argue that this is the most beautiful palm, big palm you can plant and reliably grow in Southern California. And you can see I'm out here in front of the uh, Santa Ana Stadium. I don't know how these got here. I heard about them on a palm tree uh, internet thread where there are people, crazy people like me who talk incessantly about palms. And uh, you can see why I would be into that kind of thing. And I, some guys like, yeah, they've got the, uh, it's uh, Roystonia oleraceae. And uh, that's the South American Royal Palm. The regular Royal Palm, the plumose, not as pretty foliage. That is Roystonia regia from Cuba. Now, Rosonia Regia does get slightly fatter trunk, but this is a pretty fat trunk. This is probably, oh, 
Let's, let's start with that. Echo. Um, this is a fat trunk. This is probably two and a half feet wide. And so that gives you the mass of a canary palm. The fronds aren't quite as wide as the head of a canary palm. But here's the kicker, people. These things will self-clean themselves. This stuff will just fall off. Now you gotta be kind of careful because you know, you don't know when they're gonna fall off. <laughs> Windy days, watch out. Maybe not park any of your cars underneath them, but uh, unless you trim them. If you trim them yourself, you don't have to worry about that. But if you're gonna rely upon gravity and nature to do it for you, then you should really consider uh, putting them somewhere where you're not gonna have catastrophic damage occur because of random frond drop. So um, yeah, this plant, is probably hardy to like about 28 degrees uh, when it's young. I'm sure a bit lower when it's really old like this, probably 25. They're not, they're really considered a semi-tropical plant. So they do great here. They love water. You see they're growing in the lawn here. The lawn gets lots of water, moisture all the time. And what else can I say about them? Beautiful white trunk and they get the green crown shaft, just like a king palm. Isn't that beautiful right there? Look at that big bulge. Um, you know, the regular royal palm is a beautiful palm too, but I like this one better. They're very hard to find. They're almost impossible to get your hands on. Did I mention that the trunks are white? Look at that contrast with that ficus across the street. Um, they are very hard to get your hands on. But I know a guy who knows a guy who's got some. And this is my coming out. I'm coming out, coming out of the closet, people, right now. Everybody's got to come out of the closet sooner or later. I'm the Northern California palm guy. Look, Golden Gate Palms, right? Well, you, mo you probably know where the Golden Gate Bridge is. That's up by San, San Francisco and Marin. But um, some people may know that I've had a place in San Diego for a while. It's a secret little spot where I grow all kinds of little treasures down there. I'm down there often. It's a little paradise. You can even rent my place from me uh, if you want a tropical vacation down there, nine miles from the ocean. 15 minutes from some really good surf and a beautiful beach. Uh, but I also grow a lot of cool plants. One of the plants I'm growing right now is this very plant right here, the, uh, the South American Royal Palm. I think I'm the only one that has any, but uh, uh, as differentiated from the Cuban Royal Palm, which is Roystonia regia, I have Roystonia alder ocea. I'll spell it for you. Uh, but anyway, um, if you're in Southern California, let me know, uh, especially in San Diego County. I can get you those. They're starting to get big. They're starting to get beautiful. They're starting to get nice rings on the trunk. But this is your best canary palm replacement if you are in Southern California where your temperatures don't drop much below freezing. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the story right here. They love heat. They don't really like to be right on the ocean front. They get a little torn up get a few miles inland and uh, then you're good. They'll even grow out in the desert. So keep that in mind. Give me a call. Uh, we're gonna, unfortunately my name doesn't really work for Southern California Golden Gate Palms. But uh, anyway, we'll just pretend that, you know, whatever. A name is a name. What did William Shakespeare say? A name by any other name. Uh, a, a nursery by any other name should not smell as sweet. Something like that. So yeah, goldengatepalms.com. Give me a call. Um, let me know if you need some trees. Thanks.